Blunt Cuts is a podcast fueled by creativity, curiosity, and empowerment. We cut through the daily mess of life. This is Unfiltered Honesty. Park your passive at the door. This is Blunt Cuts. Welcome to Blunt Cuts. I'm CJ, and today we're talking about handling critical feedback. And today in the studio, I have Katie Driver from Uncommon Creative. And one thing about Katie, I've worked with her in a lot of capacities, but she's a master of her craft, and her craft is anything that you need built. So Katie has the hookup and the talent and the skills to make any prop possibly imagined in your brain. And she handles feedback like no other human I've ever met. So I wanted to have her in the studio today. Welcome, Katie. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me, CJ. It's good to see you. It's so good to see you again. And you're so great at handling feedback, or at least you put on a good show. Because <laughs> you're sweet. I, ha- I have given Katie jobs before, and sometimes they are not the easiest challenges. And she's just like, yep, I can make that happen. And like she is magical. So tell me a little bit about you what you're doing on common creative studio and like what you guys do great question so we started six years ago and right out of college you know my business has grown it started with the focus of interiors and now we are doing anything but um we it's related but you know we work in two different industries we work in the film industry and um also in the event industry and so we work um in production uh, both on set and on location. We work in this department called the art department. It's one of the most creative, like, uh, go-getter type fields, and I absolutely love it. So that's where my interior design background really, really helps. Um, so is that what you went to school for? I did. I have a full um, interior design degree and a business um, minor. And so I always thought as a kid I was going to be that, like, designing, you know, high-end residential interior design. And it was you know, a professor that really helped me find out that that's not what I wanted to do. I, you know, I had an inter- this great internship with this fantastic company here in the Twin Cities, and it just was nothing that I wanted to do. You know, I'm so hands-on, and you're so sweet for saying that I can create and build, um, because that's where my heart is. It always will be. And I mean, it is so clear in oh, your work. So like, sweet. honestly, one day I was like, I want to do a photo shoot and a commercial with a giant lemon. <laughs> that was one but of my But I faves. want the lemon to be bigger than the model, but still look like a slice yes. of lemon. And Katie's like, on it. <laughs> and literally, in a couple days' time, Katie had this beautiful lemon. She took a yellow bike and made lemon wheels. And, like, honestly, check out her website. This work is incredible. And that shoot would not have been what it was without Katie's elements. And it wasn't a lot. Like it wasn't a lot of yes. propage, but it was the right prop and your proportions are right. And you're so good at what you do. And Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I love the challenge. And I think that's what brought me to, you know, I've always been interested in film specifically um, behind the scenes stuff. And, you know, my creativity started at a really young age and um, it was just that opportunity. You know, the Lord really showed me that um, what I thought <laughs> was going to be my destiny of and my purpose of designing these multimillion dollar homes was nothing what I was going to do. And I found out my love for creativity really is in the aspect of building and problem solving. And, you know, when you brought that job to me and said like, Hey, this is what I want to do that for me. I mean, my, I just soar when that, you know, those challenges arises and how can we best accomplish, you know, those creative endeavors. And for me to build like a lemon that was larger than life, it was so much fun. And I have the lemon. I took the lemon. I couldn't leave the job without taking the lemon. So there you go. I, someday <laughs> the lemon so will return to your life. Yes. I love it. Well, let's get back to this critical feedback topic. And my stance on this is, for me, feedback is essential to create the best work. And for that best work to come to the surface, you need feedback. And it it needs to be provided in an empowering way that really rallies the team to come forward with the best solution to a problem. Yeah, absolutely. Um, feedback, um, both giving it and receiving it, um, can be very difficult. But for me, um, 
feed handling critical feedback is all about separating it from a subjective topic to an objective topic and you know I don't know many people that want to be told what the heck they're doing wrong that's I think something very hard to stomach um, but over the years one thing I've found um, to that works for me as a creative and that can take a good creative to a fantastic creative is separating that subjective nature of the topic of feedback and making it objective. That will fuel my work every single project from here on out. Awesome. As a creative and what I do, you know, my jobs are here today and gone tomorrow. They are, you know, at most, they could be a week, um, they could be a day, you know, they could be 10 days, whatever it might be, but it's definitely... Um, my jobs are a mist or a vapor, you know, and they come in so fast and they go out so fast that getting critical feedback or giving criti critical feedback um, can be really tough yeah. because, you know, it's this in our society, we are so about the, you know, we all want it sugar coated. We all want this rose colored glasses. We all, um, we all want to know what we did well, but as a creative I'm I'm the opposite. You know, I want to know what I didn't do well. I want to know what were my shortcoming, shortcomings and, you know, where did I not meet their expectations? You know, um, and, and the reason why is because I always want to be growing. As a creative, um, and truly in any field, anyone listening, um, and no matter what you do, um, I think we should always be striving for the next Um you know, benchmark or best thing, um, for our work. And that self-reflection is key, right? Being oh, able to reflect yes. on your own, but without feedback, it's hard to know internally how to process or reflect on that. Yes. I think one of the hardest things is like, you'll do a job for someone and you're like, you're walking out offset or whatever you're working out or walking out of the event venue. And you're like, wow, I did great. This is awesome. Like, see you next time. And then you never get called and you're always wondering, okay, what did I do wrong? What was it that, you know, that, stop them from calling me again. And so over the years, what I've found is I chase down feedback. It sounds I really, <laughs> it's really crazy um, because I get the same reaction every time I get the same reaction. It's always shock and surprised. And then it's always like kind of caught off guard because they don't know what to say right away. But then they like really think about it and they're like, yeah, let's talk, you know, like let's discuss this. I'd love to know, or I'd love to share with you and, um, or share with you like what you're looking for and how amazing of you as a Minnesotan to do that <laughs> and to reach out. So our big blunt cut slogan up on the wall is, you know, park your passive at the door. And I think that this is such a great perspective for creatives or anyone in any industry. If somebody's not telling you or mm -hmm. giving you feedback, ask because they have totally. some. They're totally. thinking about it. They have some reflections. And if they haven't, this gives them an opportunity to think about you and put you in their mind again, especially if you're a freelancer or run your own business and you want to be rebooked. I, well, and I, the surprise always turns into this great rapport because, you know, they look at it as, wow, this person's really seeking um, this feedback that could help them. And I always try to get to the root of the feedback. I think that's the biggest thing is so much feedback is surfacey. Like, oh, you did really well. Okay. How did I do well? What did I do well? What did I fail at? What was, you know, pinpointing it? And that's what I found to be so successful in my career and my business, um, which has got me you know, job after job after job, because you were like, we talked about self reflection, I can like consistently reflect on what we've done, you know, and I have an assistant who um, works remotely out of Milwaukee, Sal and I are constantly like talking about, you know, what do we need to do better next time? How are we, you know, meeting and exceeds exceeding the needs of our, um, you know, whether it be our guests um, at events or our clients. And that fuels us. It propels us so much farther. And if you can get over, you know, the subjective quality of feedback, you set it aside and you say, this person's trying to help me. They are trying to, you know, make me better. Oh, my word. Your work will go from zero to 60 in no time flat because you are an outlier. And Katie is so humble, but she has oh, some so huge clients. I mean, you've worked for major retailers. You've worked for big, big projects. And like that idea of finding those clients and getting those clients, especially as a small business, 
can it, be tough. It's tough. And once you make those relationships, you don't want to let them go. <laughs> no, you don't. You know, the um, ability to separate personal from the objective has really um, gotten us those bigger jobs. You know, in in the corporate world, there are so many gates, doors, like obstacles you have to go through to get those jobs. And once you do, you're so right. You don't want to let them go. Um, I think if you're consistently working for these bigger corporations, you know, they want to see change in you. They want to see you staying with the times and they want to see, you know, the cutting edge of everything. And they're calling upon you to be a partner to elevate them. Absolutely. They want you to elevate them. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And if you're not getting to the root of, you know, where you're struggling or, um, you know, what you're doing well, you know, you're going to start literally, you know, wading in this pool of um, just um, complacency. I always think about this. There are 7 billion people in this world. I will never be the best. I will never be it. And I'm totally fine with that. But I always want to be the best at what I do for Uncommon. You know, I, I and I always want to be better than my last job. And I want to make sure I am better than my last job. So what's the best way to yeah, know? And not working in a silo, right? Oh word, you know, yes. I think you can get down on yourself about certain parts of a project and that may be something a client totally. didn't even that didn't even yes. affect them but you're beating yourself up over it or a client may have a very valid piece of information that you never thought about and you're like oh yeah huh if I apply that next time win for me like all overall create like feedback good or bad yeah you need to kind of grow and jump to the next level what is some of the hardest feedback that oh. you've had to stomach oh my word yes some the I think some of the hardest um, stuff I've ever had to stomach is the laundry list, the amount of it. Maybe it's not so like bad, like um, like individually, but it's just the amount of it. You know, I work with a fantastic company in the cities. It's a photo booth company, and they do slow mo, and we do um, photo or like photo booth slow mo booths together. I do the backdrop and props and stuff, and you know they do all the tech side and. Um, the owners are just this incredible couple that just love to be just immersed in the um, process. And one of the first time I ever worked with them, you know, I sent the owner an email and I said, hey, this is what's up. I want feedback. And he sent me a, the most honest email. And it was so hard to read because I think he had like a solid 12 to 14 things <laughs> and they were little they were little but in the grand scheme you looked at the email you're like, you're like it's still going <laughs> it's still going it was so much stuff but it was like you know Hal used that email to propel me forward and now we've worked together so many times and I know his expectation you know and I know like oh I'll never like one of the things it sounds really silly so we were doing this um for MIA, for Minneapolis yep. Institute mm -hmm. of Art, um, we were doing this uh, photo booth, and I had, you know, as simple as this, you guys, I'm, I'm not kidding you, I um, took this, like, copper, like, bowl, and I had glued, a fi like, affixed these, um, like, they were uh, pomegranates and grapes. Okay. It was um, for Guillermo del Toro. I don't know if yeah. you know who mm -hmm. he is. But, um, so we were... Uh, that so was I, an awesome show, by the way. Yeah, it was so cool. Um, I'm really excited for this year. Robert Wilson is um, this year's uh, spring exhibit. But um, so, you know, I had like hot glued. Sounds super silly. I had hot glued all these like fruits into this bowl. And one of the like things was like never glue anything together ever again because people want to throw things and like interact with things. I mean, it was as simple as that, but I would have never known. I mean, I had sure. done it because I was putting a prop together. I'm like, oh, this would be great. We for don't want it to fall apart. Yeah, you're thinking about like the length and longevity of something. And the logistical aspect. And then he's coming at it and he's like, no, like we want to be able to throw and toss and, you know, all the stuff. And Let I was people like, feed each other the grapes. Exactly. Yeah, you got it. And I that, do. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I would want to do that. Yeah. I definitely, that would be a photo. I'd yeah. be like, why doesn't this grape come yeah. out? I want to pretend like I'm eating it like the goddess that yes. I am. Yes. And so it's all just that. Um, I, it's, you're, it's just the little I stuff. love this, these moments because... Some people might be like, oh, my gosh, I did that for you. I'm going to take that offensively. And you're like, I would have never known totally. that in this industry of photo booths that people want to have way more fun with the profit. Yeah. Well, and, that uh, you know, um, recently I just uh, wrapped a job for um, Medica and I 
yet again sent an email to the director and I was like, hey, can we talk? And it ended up, um, you know, it was great because we spent four, almost four hours on the phone, you know, building rapport, but also getting this amazing feedback. And one of the biggest takeaways he had for me was, Um, I'm a big note taker. I always have been. I'm very attentive. And it's probably because I also have a memory of like Dory. Uh, It's horrible. I like I have such a hard time with that. So I take a lot of notes. And, you know, we were on location scouting, which um, for anyone listening, location scouting in film is where you go to see all the different opportunities for where we'll be shooting. And, you know, I was we were going from place to place and I, you know, we'd get in there and I'd start asking questions right away. I'd start saying, what do we need for talking about props? And, you know, are we needing um, shears or whatever? We're talking, talking, you know, frames and all this kind of stuff. And I was so quick to jump to my notes. And I was so quick to ask questions like, what do we need? Um, How can I help? Blah, blah, blah. But the problem was, and this was the feedback he gave me was, those conversations hadn't even developed. Like they had just gotten in the, the room at the same time I was. And they're starting to talk about that creative process as, you know, how are we going to develop this? They're still frames. creating this division and you're on to, cause you know, your role is detail. Yeah, you got it. And you know, he just said to me, he's like, I need you to read the room better. And I was like, Oh yeah, that, yeah. that is really good feedback. It's great feedback. And it, it was You know, and here's the thing I always think about feedback. Not only will um, this director's feedback help me and him working together in the future, it will help me working with another director. Because now I know, like, going into any type of location, whether it be, you know, a location scouting or maybe a tech scout. Or, like, an event or or some sort of space. Yeah, Mm -hmm. definitely. You need to read the room. And I, like, it was was definitely, like, a a reflecting um, opportunity for me to go, yeah, like I didn't do that at all. I was just so quick to, you know, because I wanted the information. And then, you know, he, he said to me on the phone, he's like, you don't ever have to worry about a director, like not having time for you because he goes, your work makes me look good. Wow. That's incredible. So I know we talked about post project and reaching out for feedback at the end, but what about at the beginning? Like, let's talk about that a little bit. So when somebody is giving you some direction and you have gotten some direction um, and then you start. Yep. And then somebody gives you feedback midway. Good question. So I just adjust as best as I possibly can, you know, with um, I, I always say this, but one thing I've never been able to put on my resume is mind reading. And so <laughs> you really so as a creative, you are interpreting what they're saying. You know, when you're telling the story through props and through sets, you are trying to read the mind of the crea- you know, the whether it be the production designer or the director or, you know, anyone involved, the writers, whatever it may be, um, you're trying to create what they want but also like instill you know your knowledge and experience as well and interpret that and so um, when I get direction I take that direction as best as I possibly can Um, but then if I get feedback whether it be you know good bad or ugly feedback I just use that to direct what's next you know and if it means that you have to step back and I think that's a big thing step back you know if you have to talk to someone outside the realm. Um, My sister is just the most amazing support system. And if I get really harsh feedback or if I get really like, like, like um, I thought I was following their direction. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) What did I miss? Exactly. If I am like totally like, okay, I must've missed the benchmark, but I don't know where, like I'll, I'll tell Jane uh, and you know, she having someone outside the realm, they Mm -hmm. can help you, man. They are like, They're just so, um, because they have nothing attached to it. I think that's the thing is we as creatives, we have so much um, just like attached to our work because we're so passionate about it. As someone who's actually given Katie direction, and I'm pretty sure you nailed it out of the park and I probably had (laughs) no like intermittent stirring of the pot, like I call it, (laughs) with you, but I have with other people. But I think that ultimately I would say that I read you as like wow she'll she just lets that roll off and moves along like she just handles it and like a pro takes care of it doesn't get emotionally attached but you are good at finding a way to outsource that to not let it come up in a conversation you will totally have that moment 
Yep. But in a more private way. Yeah. And I think that's, yes, I do. I mean, don't get me wrong. People have, um, you know, said things and definitely, you know, ripped on my character and my integrity and um, ripped on my work. And I think the easiest thing for people to rip on is my work. Um, one of the hardest things is when they start talking about my honesty, my character, my integrity, those things I have a harder time with. Um and I, I do, I, I step away from the situation. And like I said earlier, I make it objective. With feedback, you got to step back. You got to look at the big, bigger picture. And you always have to remember that that person, if they are truly working for the good of everyone, which they should be, if they're working for the good, they're telling you that for a very specific reason, because they are trying to make the project better. I think that's one of the biggest things that as a totally. young creative, I had to learn that like, sometimes yep. I wouldn't agree with it, but usually and not yeah. always sometimes your intuition is right totally. but in most of those situations that vision and that redirection for was very purposeful and it came full circle and I Absolutely. understood it later yep. even if I didn't understand it in the moment or the need for that change yeah when someone gives you feedback you need to um, separate what they're telling you what I mean by that and the biggest way to do that is um, with the word I if they tell you I like this or I don't like this, I immediately snap to and say, why don't you like that? You have to get to the fundamentals or the, like the elements of it, because if they just say, I don't like that, that doesn't help you any. Why don't they like it? Is it out of scale? Is it out of proportion? Is the, you know, color pattern texture, is that not working? So you have your running list of things. Oh my word. I heard that. (laughs) Now here are the questions I have for you. Absolutely. To help probe that idea of that initial, I don't like it. Yeah. And I don't let them stop there or I won't let them just say, I don't like it because here's the thing about creative things and a lot of things in this world, it's all subjective. I mean, your opinions are different than mine. And yet we've both had so much different um, education and we have so much knowledge on different things. At the end of the day, whether you like the vest I'm wearing or not, um, I need to know why. You she know, is the, wearing an adorable vest right now. <laughs> <laughs> like, but, you know, and that's the thing is you'll get on these production set, sets and you'll work at events and you'll do, you know, all this creative work. Um, and like I going back, it's an interpretation. So how you interpreted what they were telling you, um, and for them to say, well, I just don't like it. I'm like, you gotta give me more than that because that's not okay with no, me. And, and that I, is a seasoned creative versus a new creative yes. because a new creative will hear that implode. Yeah. <laughs> totally. Anybody out there, there right now, you, you implode and then you're like, I have to do it so much better. I have to get going. I have to focus. I want to drive this. I want to make them love it. And then you do round two and then they're like, I don't like it. And then you do round three, four, five, six, yep. seven. If you don't get that feedback and you don't get the reasons why, yep. you are going to set yourself up for a much longer day, week, month, totally. time, and totally. more frustration building because the more you try, yeah. and if you're not anywhere close to what they're looking for, the more struggles you have emotionally with your process and your yeah. work. Well, and I've been in the creative and fashion world my whole life and a lot on the receiving end of feedback. Um and in fashion, it's very cutthroat, like, uh, no, your ears aren't symmetrical enough and your eye shape is too wrong. You're not right for yeah. this or you're too skinny or you're t- not skinny enough or blah, blah, blah. So like, that's a lot of just like personal things that for some way, shape and form, people who model and are in that fashion world can let that just roll off and not be, <laughs> yeah. at least I could, I was like, okay, well, I'm not right for this. Yeah. Moving on. Yeah. Because you're rejected so much and you're getting so much of totally. that weird feedback that you're like, all right, moving along. Totally. So I will say that if anyone wants to take a crash course in feedback, just go into the modeling world. Yeah, totally. Like, <laughs> you'll, you'll clearly <laughs> like have that removed from you of having any emotional attachment to feedback. Oh, but absolutely. In the creative world as a designer and like when you get really invested, my background is design. So I would get so excited about things I'm making and then I'd show them, you know, to somebody in our director, or I'd show them to a creative director and they'd be like, yeah. no, this isn't quite what we wanted or a client. You know, I have a lot yeah. of freelance clients and they're like, no, no, I just it doesn't feel right. So those sorts oh. of initials. Oh, that is a tough. Doesn't um, feel oh, right. Oh boy, that's a tough you, comment. You know it yeah. is, and you're like, okay, how do I make it feel right? Well, mm-hmm. I've learned like you to ask questions, but now I'm kind of sitting in a seat where I give a lot of feedback. Sure. You know, and I think that there's something that I call the stir effect. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's when you just give feedback 
to keep the pot stirring totally. and it's not really going in any direction. Totally. And I try to avoid <laughs> stirring or giving feedback if I'm not ready to give it. Yep. So I'll have, you know, somebody present a project and I have like 30 clients right now that I'm handling. So any given time, somebody will pop in and be like, I have this ready for you to look at. Yeah. And I'll be like, wait, I was just way in left field. Now I'm back here. So I will take the time and be like, awesome. Thanks. I'll get back to you. Because yep. if I give an immediate feedback, most often it's not going to be the most thoughtful. <laughs> totally. It's just going to be a, it's a knee jerk. <laughs> yeah. It's just a knee jerk reaction, stirring the soup sort of affect feedback. And that's not helping anyone. That's sure. not helping the team. That's not helping this creative get where they need to get. Um, so I love to have people show me stuff, but also have questions or things they want me to check out specifically or like red line or say, okay, I feel really great about all this, but can you check on this stuff? Sure. You know, so then I'll pinpoint where they feel they need some feedback yep. to help motivate them totally. and let them know that I trust in what they're doing. Oh, absolutely. Because, absolutely. I mean, you have your job for a reason. You're very talented and you're in this role. That's not at question here. Yeah. And it never so, will be, I, it, like, or it shouldn't be at no. least. No, so I try to, and I've had bosses and I've had people that just stir or just want to have a voice. So they'll give you some sort of feedback that's not helpful. And totally. to me, I really want to offer feedback that elevates or guides someone or sets them up for success. So feedback givers, don't just stir the pot. Get in know. there, inspire your team. Um, but know at the end of the day, like that they're capable. Absolutely. And if they're not able to do their job, you're not doing your job of providing the right direction. Absolutely. Absolutely. That is, you don't want to sit and micromanage. I think that's the biggest thing is like you hire these people on or these people work for you. And, um, you know, my uncommon creatives know that I trust every single one of them and I wouldn't ask them to do anything that I wouldn't do personally. And, you know, I think the biggest thing for them is you, you're right. You're, you need to inspire and guide them. And the biggest thing is um, always setting them up for success um, and giving that feedback when needed um, and making it very, very um, like honest to them and objective to them. Because, you know, if I ever want to give feedback to my uncommon creatives, um, I always make it objective. And the reason why I do that is if I approach them and say, I don't like this on the receiving end, they're going to be like, well, what don't you like about it? You know, yeah. kind of thing. And so you, um, I always want to make sure that I'm guiding them to their, the, like the best possible, like outcome. Um, and the only way I can do that is making sure that I'm following up with them as much as possible. It's just guiding that client ask and like focusing back sometimes to the totally. project at hand, if people get stuck, um, you know, in a position, but ultimately feedback is so helpful. Totally. Absolutely. And I think anytime that I have feedback that doesn't help the situation, I'll tell someone random, not someone in the project. Like if you really don't like something, but you know, that's not going to help your end goal. You know, the purpose of why you're doing that. I check it at the door. I leave it at the door. I think that's fantastic advice. Do you have any more advice you would add to the table of processing feedback or how to handle those critical times um, and do them so well, yeah. like, <laughs> like I feel you do. <laughs> oh, you're so sweet. Um, I would just, in summary, say seek it out. That's a big thing. Um, and if it means calling, texting, emailing, seek it out. Um, be willing to set aside that time um, and do it in a very, very timely manner. Don't wait four weeks after the project and then go, all right, I'm ready to talk to you. Like, Make sure it's fresh and new and like right away. Um, and then definitely when you like seek it out, listen, 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 take it objectively. Someone, um, cuts you down, take it objectively. It's okay. I promise the sun will still rise the next day and you'll be okay. But in the end, at the end, it will propel you forward. The other thing is, um, make sure you put a plan together. How are you going to use that feedback for your next job? And then when you have that plan, implement it. Make steps to consistently put it on top of your radar. And let me tell you, it won't happen like today or tomorrow, but it might happen next month and it might not happen in a year because it takes time. And like you said, into the next project. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because that's that's our goal as creatives. You know, we are consistently, consistently building, growing and changing. And the only way we can do that is by being better than our last job. 
Well, I'm inspired to ask for more feedback. Thank you for inspiring me today, Katie. You're welcome. And thanks for hanging out with us. Where can people find you? Yeah, great question. You guys can um, find me on my website. So www.uncommoncs.com. And then you can always uh, find us on Instagram. Um, Uncommon CS um, is our handle. And then we also have this new movement happening. And I'm super excited about this. Uh, uh, it's called the Uncommoners Uprising Movement, and it's a group of people that, you know, they want to um, use their gifts and talents um, to make others feel loved. Um, they want to be more than what the world is calling them to be, and they also are big supporters of the Uncommon Creative Studio. So if you get a chance, like, check that out, and I'd love for um, you listeners to... That sounds like a whole nother topic. Come oh, my goodness. In. Let's talk about that. Oh, my goodness. I'd love to. Yeah. We, um, we're excited about it, and, you know, this... Um, un- being uncommon is so impar- important to me. Well, thank you so much again. Um, and if you guys have thank any you. questions about critical feedback, uh, we'd love to get those answered. Please continue the conversation on Instagram. You can find us at Blunt Cuts Podcast. Mm-hmm.